A narcissistic personality disorder involves a continuous pattern of self-importance, grandiosity, and I suppose a constant need for people's admiration. Sufferers generally need to surround themselves with people who they believe are unique and powerful because they believe they are unique and powerful. Now, NPD is considered a pretty diverse category um, of disorder with three major subtypes, I suppose. And these types vary in terms of clinical severity and in diagnosis. So the first subtype is grandiose or overt narcissism. Now, grandiose narcissists have the, I suppose they have the highest severity of poor psychosocial and interpersonal functioning. Think of the, you know, the, think of their motto being the line from the movie from the Titanic, I'm the king of the world. Then add a dash of charm, ambition, and charisma. And you've got the idea. Grandiose narcissists, they have a tendency to overestimate their own abilities simply because they have this really unrealistically high level of self-esteem. And they're all about control, controlling others and manipulating them as well. Grandiose narcissists also tend to suffer from anger problems. So you're going to see some narcissistic rage in there. And that can be a real issue for them. Then we have vulnerable or covert narcissists. Now, vulnerable narcissists actually tend to be the ones who do seek out help in the most often anyway. So they will visit a therapist or a counsellor or a psychologist, but that's more to do with the fact that they also tend to have the highest comorbidity with other disorders like, you know, depressive or anxiety disorders. So they're seeking out help for those rather than for the narcissism. They're also really sensitive and display serious vulnerability to criticism, and they can fluctuate between really low and really high self-esteem. Now, unlike grandiose narcissists, the vulnerable narcissists, they're not leaders. You know, they won't push themselves to the front. They're never going to be the life and soul of the party. And you're more likely going to find them standing to the side, you know, drinking on their own and feeling irritated and annoyed that no one is giving them the attention that they believe they deserve. I mean, they're no different to any other narcissist in that regard. They're introverted, they're insecure, and they have a very low, a very low self-esteem. Now, they do believe that they deserve special treatment, but they don't overtly demand it like a grandiose narcissist would. Grandiose narcissist would. They do fantasize about success, and, you know, they want people to praise them so that they can feel good about themselves. In fact, they believe that people haven't recognized how amazing they are how wonderful they are, and, you know, that's that's everybody else's fault, never theirs. So they do want people to praise them, they do want to feel good about themselves, but, I mean, they're a conundrum, really, because they simultaneously want to be praised and adored, like any narcissist, and they believe they're better than, any, than everybody else, but they also have very low self-esteem, and sometimes they fall into this whole victim mentality, and then finally, you have the malignant, the malignant narcissists. Now, these are the most aggressive and the most abusive of the bunch. These are the ones who will actively go out there and destroy and damage people. They have the same egocentric and self-absorption and sense of superiority as the other narcissists. But they also have traits associated with anti antisocial personality disorder, like aggression, paranoia, and an absolute lack of empathy. You know, they might even have a big dollop of sadism thrown in there as well. So they're not pleasant to be around. Remember, though, and, and this isn't excusing any of the behaviour, NPD is a genuine mental health condition, and sufferers usually can't control their dysfunctional behavioural patterns. You know, they often have feelings of emptiness, from childhood, I suppose, and emotional trauma. And whether that trauma is neglect or abuse or something else, some do seek out mental health help, but to improve relationships and build empathy. Many 
Well, most don't. So if you do find yourself in a relationship with a narcissist, a real one, the best thing you can do is distance yourself from them. But do keep in mind that just because, say, your ex was a douchebag doesn't make them a narcissist. Sometimes people are just assholes. <laughs>